The Commodore 64. Now, it's a bit of a strange machine for me, not because the hardware is in any way strange, or because the machine itself is inherently bewildering. It's more due to when I owned it. See, I got my 64 after my Sega Master System, mainly because I wanted to do computer stuff without attempting to repair the Spectrum sitting up in the loft. By now, it was already the early 90s, and so I picked up my 64C model secondhand and received it as a birthday present from the parental enablers of my habit. It came with a load of software, most of which formed my preferences for the games I came to love on that system. But I perhaps didn't use it as much for gaming as you might expect. I waited to trade in my Master System for a Mega Drive for that. It was more a machine I dabbled with, coded with, ran paint programs with, and generally explored the world of microcomputers with. I guess this was therefore the machine which really enforced my attachment of binary hardware. Of course, it's undeniable that there's a wealth of amazing games for the 64, some of which came out after I'd obtained my machine, but these are the ones I gained the most affection for. Number 7. Thriller. How could you not be blown away by Driller? From as early as I could remember, I yearned for a first-person perspective experience on my digital hardware, and this was probably the first game I played to really offer it. Driller was the first game which employed Incentive Software's revolutionary Freescape engine. I'll be honest at this point, I didn't really even know what I was supposed to do in this game. I knew it was some kind of a ship on a planet which needed drilling, and that was about it. The surroundings were strange, the pace was slow, but I cared not for these minor quibbles. I was on another planet. I was commanding a ship. It was bloody glorious. Thankfully today you can play it at a faster pace and the game unveils itself for its true grandeur. Number 6. Badlands. This is quite a simple overhead racer. It didn't even receive that good scores in magazine reviews of the time. But damn, I found it addictive. Sometimes it's difficult to put your finger on why you find a particular activity addictive. Sometimes it calls to a deep, fettered emotion. Sometimes it's just glorious fun. On this occasion, I think the required concentration to manoeuvre the large vehicles round without crashing just zoned my mind out and provided a somewhat relaxing experience. Plus, you can shoot people. That always helps. Number 5, Turrican 2. Come on, you all expected there to be a Turrican game somewhere. It's simply a magnificent, rampant platforming action game. This was almost like playing an Amiga game on the humble 64K hardware. It was fast, colourful, well-defined, and most of all, fun. As you career round levels filled with parallax scrolling and hordes of foes with faces to blast clean off. It's a tricky game, but that just adds to its playability. Number 4, Mayhem in Monsterland. Arriving very late in the Commodore's life, this game almost blew apart what we thought was possible on the hardware. As you can hear, the theme tune is rather reminiscent of Tiny Toon Adventures, that 1990s cartoon series. We're all a little loony, and in this cartoony, we're invading your TV. This was like a Sega or Nintendo game, but on hardware from the early 1980s. At the time, I was a regular subscriber to Commodore Format Magazine, and they were going absolutely batshit crazy with hype over this title. Probably because there wasn't a great deal else to report on at the time, but their hype was warranted, and the game is a delight to play, with the title earning a score of 100% when in issue 38 of the magazine when it finally landed. So much colour. So much pumping beat. You get the feeling that if this game had been released a decade earlier, it would have quickly become a Commodore mascot and blown other machines clean out of the water. But as we know, good things and programming competence come to those who wait. Number 3. Stunt Car Racer. This is a game you probably wouldn't imagine converting well to any 8-bit hardware, but Jeff Crammond and MicroStyle did an amazing job here. It's not blisteringly fast, but it's fast enough to be pretty darn playable, and comparable to even the Amiga version, especially given the fact that you're in a 3D environment. Like Driller, this game blew my absolute socks off, and kept me entertained for many a winter evening. 
This wasn't the 2D racing game of old, this was a 3D racing game where you drove across elevated sections of track and jumped high into the sky. Delightful. Number 2. The Last Ninja 2. Having held a love for isometric games since Night Law on the Spectrum, one of the Last Ninja games was always going to feature on this list. It took the concept and upped it to an entirely different level. Beautiful box art, and don't underestimate the importance of box art to a game, especially in the 80s. Beautiful music, beautiful graphics, beautiful gameplay. Plus, you're a freaking ninja man. For me, the second game is the best in the series, just as it seems to do all these things better than the others. And so, that leaves number one. Space Crusade. Now this won't be everyone's number one for sure, but it's a personal favourite of mine, mainly because I owned the board game and I had great appreciation for the fantasy Warhammer 40,000 universe. Plus, of course, it's a great game in its own right. The board game concept has been implemented perfectly. Where some board games are translated in a rather tedious fashion, the strategy involved in this conversion is spot on. The graphics and music also serve to pull you directly into the fantasy universe, especially the 3D perspective used to carry out your orders. It really brings the board game to life as you prowl the atmospheric corridors with great apprehension in your stomach for fear of bumping into the dreadnought on your next move. This game was ported to many machines, but this remains my favourite version, and like a lot of 64 games, it holds up remarkably well to the Amiga version. Now the debate of Sinclair Spectrum vs Commodore is one which still thrives today, it's one with winners on either side. For me, there are actually more Spectrum games which I hold dear, which made making this list a bit easier than my last one. But I think that's more due to when I owned these machines more than anything else. By the time I got my 64 I'd had other gaming experience and it wasn't quite as amazing as the Spectrum titles appeared in the 80s. The Commodore's hardware stood the test of time and retains a very loyal fanbase to this day. Just going through this list makes me want to grab my 64 and fire it up for an epic session. So, that's probably what I'll go and do. Thank you for watching my top 7 Commodore 64 games. I've done plenty in the past, there'll be plenty to come in the future. Click one below, if you fancy it you can contribute to my Patreon, you can also subscribe or share this video if you like, in any case. Thank you very much for watching and good night, sweet dreams.